Erev Tov Harim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very interesting broadcast this evening. And uh, let me just take you real quick just to kind of show you the headline that we are looking at this evening. It's rtnews.com there. Turkey supports ISIS, wants to revive Ottoman Empire, Syrian's UN envoy. Uh, what you're looking at here on the screen and behind you here is... Uh, this is President Erdogan in the picture there, and he has seen amongst uh, all of the different warriors that were used uh, in their different uh, armaments and stuff back during the time of the Ottoman Empire's reign for, oh gosh, what, I guess about a 500-year period. In fact, it was the, the Ottoman Empire that built the current old city walls around uh, Jerusalem uh, that was done years ago. And um, very, very interesting to say the least here. But uh, as soon as I saw this, the first thing that come to my mind is that, uh, well, it's not going to be long before the Christian community is going to say, this is your Antichrist. Let me tell you real quick, like, he's not the Antichrist. Uh, but I will say this, the Vatican has been grooming him just for that purpose. And everything that has been happening, that's been going on in the Middle East, has been to push this man to a position to make him look like that, yes, he is the Antichrist that's to come. In fact, Wally Shubat wasted no time at all on jumping on this. When I looked up Erdogan Antichrist, practically every article he's got is the one that is saying this may very well be the Antichrist. But you have to look at what the scripture says about the Antichrist. In fact, the only place we see the word Antichrist is in the book of John, 1st, 2nd, uh, and 3rd John, but it's only in the 1st and 2nd parts. There's one thing I wanted to read to you, though, from that particular book there uh, that might give you a little insight about who the Antichrist really is. And that's 1st John 2.18. He says, little children, it is the last time. And... Uh, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. All right, now that's a singular Antichrist. All right, even now are there many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. Notice what he says next. Verse 19, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. You see, this is the, one of the main things that you can see who the Antichrist really is, is by that statement in itself. The Antichrist was actually among the believers of, who, of Jesus in his day, but they went out from them. Go back and look at historically and see which ones were the ones that were going out from the true believers. Look at the ones that didn't stay with James. Look at the ones that did not believe Peter's teachings. This is where you end up with the early church fathers. There's actually a division in the early church fathers. If you go back and read the historical documentation, the early church fathers, there's two different branches of early church fathers. One of those branches actually put together with Constantine, the Roman Catholic Church. They went out from us because they were not of us. And what did the early Catholic Church do? They burnt all the ancient documents that they could find, all the writings that were written about Jesus. They burnt as many of them as they possibly could. They didn't want any other doctrine except their own out there. And then they went on a crusade to murder all the early Christians that believed anything contrary to what they taught. This is what the Antichrist spirit was doing then. And as John said, there were many of them already. And they had went out from us because they were not of us, or they would have continued with us. But nonetheless, it's been a long crusade for the Vatican to come up with a good man that they could make their Antichrist or a 
caliphate among the, the Arabic people, or the Mahdi, you might, that he is called in the Quran, which is nothing but a Vatican written book to begin with. And so I say this also for the Arabic people that may listen to the broadcast. In fact, yesterday we had a lot of Arabic people and also those that were anti-Semites that listened to the broadcast. If you're wondering why we had so many down comments on there, we would have loved to have actually put the comments up for you, but the vulgarity of the language of all the anti-Semitic people that were against Israel that came on as a result of the video that we did about the Palestinians uh, calling for more blood to, be wa to water the ground of Israel with more blood, this is what caused all the downing of the video there. It's amazing to say the least, but the F word was used so freely and every other type of nasty word that you could possibly think of. Had they just disagreed without all the vulgarity, I would have gladly posted their comments so you could see. But these were people that hated the state of Israel. They were calling us nothing but a, a, a Zionist propaganda news network. Well, you have to remember, we weren't the ones that published. It was the Fatah, uh, one of their own members on their Facebook page. They're the ones that published this, not us. We were only quoting what Israel National News had put out there. And do understand, I'm not against the Palestinian people either. I do realize, and I have stated before, that Israel should treat them as a brother, especially if they want to live in peace. But if they don't want to live in peace, then what can you expect? Especially in the situation that we have now, nothing but chaos in the area there. Now, back here to Erd Erdogan, let me share with you a little bit about what's written in the article here. It says, Syria's envoy to the UN has accused Turkey of supporting terrorist groups and covering for their invasion into Syria, urging the UN to end Ankara's violations and crimes. Bashar al-Jafari uh, also warned that Erdogan's goal is to revive the Ottoman Empire. Well, you know, it kind of... It's interesting to say the least. I would say there's a lot of truth to it just by the mere staged photo that Erdogan is, is being a part of. Some people are saying that he's claiming to be God now. Again, you have to understand, this is what the Vatican has been trying to do. They have been grooming a man to make him look like the Mahdi, and they have intentionally looked for someone that could fit the bill so it would take all the heat off of them in the first place. We're going to be going into a lot more of this. I've been doing some deep research on the Antichrist uh, because of things that I've stumbled on with this article here to prove to you even more so who that Antichrist really will be. And um, I know a lot of people we, we've said, and, and we do know this because you have to remember, John said there were many Antichrists. Every Pope of Rome has been an Antichrist. Antichristo, the original word that this comes from, which means instead of Christ. He is a substitute. He is one that is like Christ. That's why it says that they were, John says, they went out from us because they were not of us. So the Antichrist actually has to be a person that professed Christi Christianity. It cannot be someone that is a Muslim. He doesn't profess Christianity. It has to be someone that is a professor, professor of Christianity, professing that Christianity is true. And, but yet in a perverted sense of it. Anyway, Syria's permanent, uh, permanent representative to the UN wrote in his letter to the World Body uh, Task reported, those groups are being provided with funding, weapons, material, logistics support by states and regimes from the region and beyond. In other words, the United States as well. While mentioning other players allegedly involved in the spread of the Islamic terrorism, Jop Afari accused Turkey and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of playing the most active role during the crisis. Turkish interference in Syria's in, in, uh, internal affairs took many forms, including direct involvement of the regime of Erdogan. The Turkish armed forces is an offensive military operation in support of terrorists. Ja'afari wrote to the UN Secretary uh, General Ben Kam, uh, Ban Ki Moon and the UN Secretary Council, as cited by RIA Novosti. All right, now, 
goes on to say, those, speaking of the Turkish forces, have also provided covering fire for the terrorists moving inside Syria territory or along the Syrian-Turkish border in order to facilitate the infiltration of terrorist mercenaries from Turkish territory into, Syri into Syrian territory. The letter said in his letter to the UN, Ja Afari cited the downing of the Russian Su-24 jet as another example of Erdogan's attempts to up his regime involvement in the smuggling of stolen Syrian oil by ISIS into Turkey and the smuggling of weapons and material by Turkey to the terrorists in Syria. Yeah. Let me give you this last little section right here. Appealing to the UN, the Syrian envoy also said it was Erdogan's in intention to revive the Ottoman colonial legacy. Jafari pointed to the Turkish leader's statements on protecting the people of Turkish descent a few years ago, ignoring the fact that they might be citizens of other countries. Syria has also called on the UN to take a firm stand to put an end to these violations and crimes committed by Ankara. Jafari's letter was only the latest attempt to draw attention of the international community to Turkey's alleged support of Islamic militants, including the Islamic State, ISIS, formerly ISIS, ISIL. Now, let me just share with you some interesting insight on this. We have watched uh, with all the things ever since the downing of the uh, Russian uh, bomber, the Su-24, uh, the United States, with no issues, no, no backpedaling or nothing, has stood behind Turkey 100%. They are willing, in fact, to go to war with Russia over the downing of this, uh, uh, this Russian bomber, if that's what it meant. It is obvious that Rome is causing the United States to keep Turkey up there as if they're a great nation there and to back them to help make this alliance that is going on. Now you have to also remember, Turkey and Saudi Arabia also are very close allies and partners, and they're there trying to topple Bashar al-Assad. And now we see that Turkey has invaded uh, a little while back into Iraq. They're trying to push Russia into a war. And we see, too, that according to the biblical prophecy, that Nineveh would be totally obliterated. They would be without inhabitant. And by the way, Nineveh of, uh, that is speaking of in the scripture there is actually Mosul. Mosul and Nineveh, they cross the river from one another. And this is where Turkey has gone in there and they have been doing what? They have been doing a genocide campaign against the Kurdish people in that region there. And now Russia is being put into a position, not only is he going to have to protect Bashar al-Assad from Turkey and the United States coming against him, uh, and, and you can't say the United States is not coming against Bashar al-Assad. It is the rebel forces that the U.S. is backing. U.S. has backed ISIS forces as well. So has Turkey. And what are they trying to do? Topple Bashar al-Assad. The U.S. Obama administration is still saying that uh, Bashar al-Assad must go. Even John Kerry spoke about um, Russia and Iran's leaders as problem children if they don't agree that Bashar al-Assad must go. Uh, so you can't help but wonder. I mean, it's very strange the way things are going on in the Middle East there. And I've been looking very seriously to, as far as that King of the South in Daniel 11, could that be Saudi Arabia and the alliance that he is putting forth? I thought about recently when I saw the mention of Saudi Arabia sending in uh, 100,000 troops there to fight against Syria. And out of that coalition of troops there, or uh, as they say, ISIS, but they're really, the goal is, is to top Bashar al-Assad. And one of the main things that Saudi Arabia is doing, those fighters include 90,000 from uh, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the different regions down there, Kuwait would bring together that, and 10,000 troops from the United States. Well, if you look in Daniel 11, there is mention of 10,000 times uh, thousands there that would actually be destroyed. Now, I'm not saying it is as of yet because I need to, I'm really studying and prayerfully looking at this. Could that be the force that is being spoken about that they're putting together with the United States in Saudi Arabia? And is Saudi Arabia that king of the south? Uh, there again, it's only 
It's a conjecture at this point here. I don't say that it's so. I'm prayerfully looking more into this. Let me share with you some more things, though, that's going on. And this is something that the Vatican did that was reported on Haaretz.com. Uh, it's reported on many different media outlets, but I'll just share this with you as well. Uh, this happened uh, a little while back. It's been, what, a few months ago. Turkey summons Vatican's envoy after Pope describes the Armenian genocide. Uh, Pope defends his uh, pronouncement by saying it is his duty to honor the, the memory of the innocent men and women, children, priests, and bishops who were senselessly, senselessly, senselessly murdered. That was in the, the beginning of the 20th century, back in 1915, when the Ottoman Empire, before uh, uh, its collapse there, had murdered, some estimates by scholars, one and a half million Armenians that were murdered there. And many of the, you know, you have to remember, Many of the Armenians are uh, Christians even to this day. We have the Armenian quarter in Jerusalem there that makes up the first quarter on the right-hand side when you come into Jaffa Gate. That is the Armenian quarter. Wonderful people. I've met, know, have many Armenian friends there. And uh, but anyway, Pope Francis in Aram uh, says here, I, I during an American right mass marking 100 years since the mass killing of the Armenians on April 12th of 2015 says that the Armenian slaughter, Pope remembers first genocide of the 20th century. In Turkey, even as even a respected filmmaker can't discuss Armenian genocide, David and Goliath in the Caucasus. Uh, the Pope Kim uh, Kardashian escaped Nazis, the PR and politics of genocide recognition. Reuters noted, Turkey told the Vatican's ambassador on Sunday it was deeply sorry and disappointed that Pope Francis had called the 1915 mass killings in Armenia a genocide. An official said adding the Pope's comments had caused a problem of trust. Turkey also called its ambassador to the Vatican back to Ankara for consultation, the foreign ministry said on Sunday. Now, again, we have to remember, Turkey is backing ISIS. The United States helped fund it. Even the funny thing is even uh, the, uh, the Mossad, Israeli Mossad, has also been involved with this organization of ISIS. There's been proof. They had one of their own top-ranking uh, officers that was leading ISIS in the field captured by the Kurds. Uh, so this is another reason why you see the United States backing and turning the other cheek, so to speak, while Turkey went into Iraq and attacked the different Kurdish villages there uh, and killing the Kurds there. As we saw in RT's footage, we even see Navy SEALs working with the Turkish military on this. So you can't say that they're not involved. They are involved. And why is all this happening to begin with? It, it, it seems to me that the Vatican, along with the United States, NATO, and their allies, they're trying to rile up the Muslim world because they need an Arabic Antichrist. And the sad thing is, is Erdogan, he's gullible enough to fall for all this. He, they have put him into power, they have placed him where they want him, and they're raising him up to be that Mahdi, so that the Vatican can look like the Savior. You see, this is why we see even in Daniel 11, verse 14, the lawless of thy people, Daniel's people, the lawless of thy people, will try to marry the vision. And this is what's happening here. They're trying to bring to pass the, the, to, to bring to pass Isaiah's prophecy of chapter 2. This is exactly what we see going on in the Middle East there. And Israel, he has his own lawless ones. They're not even, they're not even the, the Orthodox community. I'm not talking about the Orthodox community that just signed the agreement uh, stating that the Vatican is their friends and, and that they should work together and, and basically just opened up and married them. You know, if you guys never read the book of Malachi, let me, let me just share one thing. I will share one thing with you in the book of Malachi, because I'm, I'm going to tell you something, guys. You need to know this. Uh, in Malachi chapter 2, let me, let me just, I think this is really important that I take you to this here. Um, in Malachi chapter 2, Malachi says a very astonishing uh, prophecy here that many people completely overlook. And I am amazed that so many people don't even see this part here. Um, and it speaks about Judah here. Let me just find this real quickly for you. 
Uh, I think this is it right here. And verse 11, And Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loveth, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Do you not know what they're doing when they say they married the daughter of a strange God? This is, when, this is when Judah, and remember, it's Judah is who's at home right now. The house of Judah is the ones that are in Israel. The whole creation of the, creation of the state of Israel was so that it could fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah where God said that the house of Judah would return home first. This is where God would take the time where he would reveal himself to the house of Judah. But while they're back, this is what God says, Judah hath dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Why? It's a covenant for the land. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loveth and hath married the daughter of a strange God. The strange God is the Pope of Rome. The daughter. Bringing them in together. Now notice what it says in verse 12. May the Lord cut off to the man that doeth this, him that calleth, and him that answereth out of the tents of Jacob, and him that offer an offering unto the Lord of hosts. The man that married in Rome into Israel may be cut off. Is it going to be held to the charge of Shimon Perez? I don't know. Is it going to be held to all these rabbis that have just signed this document, bringing in, marrying in to, 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 the, to the great whore of Rome? I don't know. That's up to God to decide. But what I'm trying to show you is that prophecies, friends, prophecy is being fulfilled on a regular basis. The Vatican is only setting up the stage. What do you think? Let me show you something here. Germans tor torch 222 Muslim refugee homes. See, that's another thing. The whole crisis, the refugee crisis, was created by the Arabic people to begin with. Of course, supported by the United States, their ISIS movement. But the ISIS are the people that created the refugee crisis, as we have seen in Micah chapter 7, I shared with you before. Micah chapter 7. Let me, let me just read it to you. So we don't have to go back and forth. I, I want you to see these things. All right? In, in Micah, Micah clearly prophesied what would happen there. And, and I do, I will come back by God's grace very soon. I want to share with you guys what the Lord has been revealing to me that is going on in Daniel 11. I have sincerely been praying before the Lord about Daniel 11. And, and the tough thing is, is God said it wouldn't be revealed until the end time. So, uh, you know, I don't know if he'll reveal it, you know, because of these things. I have no idea. Anyway, verse 13, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. That's what, this is, this is speaking about Syria. Actually, it's Assyria, which is not just Syria. It includes parts of Iraq, Syria, all the different regions there that are war-torn over there. They do it of their own doings. And now we see what's going on. Just like the sister from Norway, when I got the little thing that a friend shared with me on Facebook not long ago, the prophecy of the 90-year-old woman in 1968 that talked about that in the latter days when the coming of the Christ would be near, that there would be a huge refugee crisis that would come up out of the Middle East, up into Europe, up into Scandinavia. And that these people would end up being treated just like the Jews were before the Second World War. And the sister said, God would have enough. The iniquity would be filled. And that's the iniquity of the Amorites. It would be fulfilled at that point there. And then God would bring judgment. You know, I, now I realize many of these people that come up in here are nothing but a bunch of warriors to begin with. Young men ready to fight, ready to cause trouble. But there's many of these refugees that are displaced. Arabic people that, that, that missionaries have longed their entire life to be able to witness to. And now they come into your own country where they're no longer under Sharia law. And the opportunity to witness to them is there. And instead, what happens? Torch 222 Muslim refugee homes. That's the way we receive them. 
You know, I realize that there is an epidemic also in Europe. I realize that. I know that they're being killed by the thousands as far as the European citizens are being murdered here that's not being reported by the news. Women that are being raped by these, by these gangs. But this stuff is being incited and in, in, in the neo-Nazis that are raising up here in Germany that are doing this like they did to the Jews is being done intentionally to cause unrest, to cause the Muslim world to go nuts after seeing all their people murdered and stuff. So that why? So that they can say that there is a Muslim Mahdi. So Wally Shubak can become the famous guy who is nothing but a Vatican puppet. You know? And I'm going to tell you something. I would, me and Wally were going to be on, a, on, a, on an interview together once before. But the sister that was having us on, the, on, the, on her program together, we were coming on, I, they called me up and they told me, whatever you do when you're on the interview with Wally Shubat, you do not speak anything against what he has to say when it comes to the Antichrist. You do not speak your own opinion. This is the honest to God's truth. I was told not to speak my own opinion. And I'm like, what is it? I didn't even know. I knew I've heard of Wally Shubat, but I didn't know anything about the brother. You know, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You expect me just to keep my mouth shut and say nothing. And, and the sister tells me, she says, Wally doesn't look at the uh, Catholic Church as being the Antichrist. And he knows it's the Muslims. And so therefore, and the sister tells me, Steve, I believe that you're right. But when he's on this interview, you're to keep your mouth shut and do not go against him one single bit. Let him say what he wants. Now, they had already asked me to tell all the people that listened to our channel about the interview, in which we did. Back then, we weren't that big at the time. We had maybe 20,000 subscribers. But because of that, I went and researched who the man really was. And when I saw who he really was, I went back to the sister. I said, I need Wally to call me. I need to speak to him personally. He never would. I said, because I cannot do an interview with this man and then hold my tongue and say nothing. I said, I at least need to, I, would like, I said, I would like to speak to the brother, this brother to brother about my differences with him before we go on a program. At least to express my own opinion with him. And of course, I was told that it would be done. Never, he never called me. And then when the time came for the interview, they wanted me to do it anyway. I backed out. I said, no. I said, now you've already got all the people that follow our ministry going to go listen to this and believe a lie. I was forced to have to go tell our own people that followed the, 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 the teachings that we were doing at the time. I was forced to have to go tell them the truth of what I believe and what Wally would actually be saying in this particular uh, meeting. And I backed out of the interview completely myself. I spoke about it. I showed how he was not a terrorist turned Christian from the Palestinians, how CNN had exposed him, etc. All kinds of things that I had discovered. And the thing was, you talking about bringing out the worst in Wally Shubat, when I did that, that really got him riled up, but he should have come to me. I tried to get him to come to me so we could speak about it, but there was no way I would allow the people to believe a lie. Especially when they threw me out there for the wolves, just just to be thrown out there to be, a, be, be attacked and, and be told that everything I believe is a lie and I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut? That's nonsense. If you have a different opinion, it's okay, but we should at least be able to speak about it as brothers in peace and in love. Instead, I got the worst email you could have ever imagined. I've never got an email with more curse words in it than from any other person. Not even the people that were putting the nasty comments on the channel about the Palestinian video we did news yesterday, not even all these people that did all the thumbs down with all their nasty words couldn't even compare to the nasty things that this man wrote me. So, my point is, and I know while he married a Catholic girl, he has written a book, and... Uh, I, th I forget the title of it, but it's dealing with the Catholicism. He's very supportive of the Catholic Church. So he is a main man to help promote a Muslim Mahdi for Rome. He has been taken in by all the, the, the big time uh, ministers, Chuck Missler. And Chuck's a friend of mine. Chuck is, supports what Wally does and is big for the, the Muslim Antichrist. In fact, for a while there, Chuck was actually backstepping a little bit. I spoke with Chuck on this extensively. I told Chuck at one time, Chuck, you never taught like this. 
And when I sent Chuck some serious things about what the Vatican was doing, Chuck had an emergency meeting, and Chuck put out there as well to, to his own people, he said, we may have underestimated the Catholic Church. And then, of course, Chuck went back the other way again. But friends, let me tell you something. This is, this is going to be the man, I believe. Now, I can't say for sure, but I believe this is who they're going to use as their Muslim Antichrist. They have to make the Pope of Rome look like a savior. And I don't say that Pope Francis is the last Pope. There still may be another Pope come in. But they're all the Antichrist because that's what John says. He speaks about the one Antichrist that will come, and then he says there's many Antichrists already. And they went out from us because they were not of us. So this is what we see. And what's happening? NATO, who backs and supports this strange God, this Antichrist who's really the Antichrist in Rome, they are working on causing all kinds of violence amongst the Arabic people. Turning the Arabic people against themselves, turning the Arabic people against the Europeans, the Americans, everybody. Until it's going to turn into nothing but a huge bloodbath. And then the United States will come in into the Middle East like a whirlwind. And then they'll start doing some serious war over there. Just so that the Pope of Rome can take over Jerusalem. I think this is when, the, this is when also when Israel will come under a heavy attack. They want to force the Jew, the, 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 the honest to goodness, good hearted Orthodox community that really does love the Lord. They just blind to who the Messiah is. That they don't want the Pope of Rome in their country. They don't want this ecumenical movement along with this Orthodox bunch of backslidden, renegade Orthodox community that is sucked up to the Rome. We're working on that too, by the way. We've got several friends that are working with us on there too, investigating all of these different rabbis that are involved. God bless those that are, that are out there working with us to bring this together, to bring a report to you to show you what's really going on. So I wanted to show you this as well, what's happening here. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of information about this. With the influx in the asylum seekers, Germany has seen a wave of violence against Muslim refugees and immigrants, including the attacks on shelters and homes. Agents France Prasi reported Monday Germany has volunteered to take the highest number of refugees in the European Union, expecting between 800,000 to 1 million asylum seekers, most from the war-torn Middle East, before the end of the year. At least 222 homes belonging to the refugees were lit on fire since January. The lo uh, local reporter cited an investigation in Germany's newspaper, Die Zeit. Of those attacks in which 104 people were wounded, four people were prosecuted for their involvement, including the arson attacks, Die Zeit's investigation found that at least 747 crimes had been perpetrated against refugees in the nation since the beginning of the year. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of back here in, in Germany when they had the, uh, the night of, of the breaking of the glass windows and stuff of the Jewish shops. This is what it reminds me of. And who was it? It was actually government people that went against. It was part of the Nazi party that dressed up as civilians and made it look like the civilians were against them. I think these atrocities are being conducted by governments, only masquerading as extremists in the country. Or maybe they're just paying the extremist. Isn't it funny how no prosecutions? They can't seem to find the perpetrators of all these violent acts. They're trying to stir up unrest in Europe. It's coming to America as well. This is why the, the uh, black people's community in America is being stirred up as well. And I just encourage you, my brothers over there, don't be a partaker of it. This is what the government's trying to do is stir up your communities to cause civil unrest in the United States. They need to bring about a one world government, a one world order. And they're well on their way to doing it. Well on their way to doing it. Anyway, one other quick little news update I'll tell you here. RT News uh, uh, brought out that today, uh, or maybe I think this was on Saturday actually, a uh, provocative close call U.S. military fume after Iran test fires a missile only 1.3 kilometers away from the USS Truman. Boy, that was close. 
Um, the U.S. says Truman was, was going, uh, says the U.S. military was outraged when Iranian ships fired rockets in the Strait of Hormuz, Hormuz uh, as the USS Harry Truman, an aircraft carrier, was reportedly passing 1,500 yards away. U.S. Central Command called the drill provocative, unsafe, and unprofessional. The incident, which originally reported on Tuesday, via two unnamed U.S. military officials speaking to NBC News, allegedly took place on Saturday. One of the officials said that the U.S. ship had been an internationally recognized maritime traffic lane had not in any country's territorial waters during the time of Iran's naval exercises. Iran issued a warning over maritime radio shortly before conducting the missile test, asking vessels to remain clear. The USS Harry S. Truman was about 1,500 yards uh, away from the launch location. The rockets were directed off the carrier's starboard side, away from the commercial ships and traffic lane, the sources said. Yet while Iranians were clearly not trying to target the U.S. ship, the officials called the drill uh, unnecessary, provocative, and unsafe. I have to agree with that. I do agree with that. You, you know, Iran, what a, it is clearly that the Iranians are doing, so, doing this intentionally for provocation against the United States. Is, are they trying to get the United States to, to, to strike back? I mean, it, it's just nuts, friends, nuts. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. If this news broadcast is a blessing to you, we do need your support as the year closes out here. We thank you for your kindness. We thank so many of you that, that are being a part and helping us to continue this type of prophetic news broadcast, keeping it going forward. You can go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. We have a place you can give online. Or if you go to IsraelReturns.com, which is our, uh, our ministry site, we also have an address in Europe where you can send a check to us here. And yes, you can send U.S. checks because we deposit electronically into a U.S. bank. So it's perfectly okay to do that. Uh, if you send money orders, we end up having to send them back to the U.S. in order to get deposited by a friend that we have there. Anyway, I'm, I'm glad you tuned in this evening. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.